All right, welcome back. You can find us on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty. Be sure to hit the new website up. Always, always new additions over there. Cool player pages, and you can become a Patreon member through the website. After five or uh, six months, you get a free T-shirt, five dollar holler. Always an extra episode over there. So make sure you go check the Patreon uh, situation out. Lots of questions and answers going on. Fun stuff. They have their forming leagues and getting people to join different things. So if you're looking for other people to play with, there's guys over there also looking to play for a little bit of cashola. So fun stuff. Absolutely. And check out the player page. Check out those rookie pages. If there's a if there's a rookie you're looking for that I don't have up there, let me know. Maybe I'll uh, accommodate you. Yeah. Okay. I'm about done though. Well, we just crushing we, it, crushing it. Just started some talking about a little bit of Godwin, and we wanted to come out of the gate swinging and and not go with the coach speak right off the rip. But did, oh, coach speak! Did some digging on Bruce Arians <sighs> and where he comes from and kind of what he does, and read several articles that a lot of other people did some deep digging on, and you know wrote the old research paper, <laughs> pulling quotes and. But you left your notepad out. Adding things. Well, I, I transferred it to digital. What? <laughs> what? You left the yellow legal at home? I did. I Dang did. It, idiot. I'm, Not like you don't live two minutes away. That's true. All right. So getting into some Bruce Arians here. He, it all stems back to being a Bear Bryant guy. That was his first big job. Went over to old coach Bear Bryant, which when he left there to go take the temple job, um, he left him with words of, Coach him hard and hug him later, which is <laughs> basically the philosophy that Bruce Arians has lived by. He keeps a picture of Bear Bryant over top of his desk for the last 34 years. A big picture, like right over his shoulder. <laughs> big picture. Um, the eyes follow you when so you walk he, around yeah. the room. So he kind of lives by that. And then just going back and just digging in to what kind of guy he is, like all the former players from that kind of mantra of, hey, he's going to coach him hard and swear at him and give him a hard time. But he knows he's coaching. He, he he breaks it down like I'm. I'm saying that you're playing shitty football right now. You're not a bad guy. Like I want to. We have to separate these two things of being like, hey, I'm gonna coach the shit out of you and give you a hard time. But at the end of the day, you know, I got you. Whatever you need, your family and all of his former teammates have, or former guys that he's coached have nothing but great things to say about him. Uh, some history of where he was in '98 to 2000. He was the coach, uh, the the QB coach of the Colts. That's Peyton Manning. Sure. So. Groomed, groomed a young Peyton who had some of the best rookie years ever. Obviously, one in 15 the first year but and threw a decent amount of picks, but still broke a bunch of rookie records and helped groom him into maybe one of the best quarterbacks ever. Definitely played the game completely different than really anybody else had. Uh, then he goes to Pittsburgh 2004 to 2011. He's got Big Ben grooming him along. Um, in that time... He gets a lot of credit for the the big the Big Ben grooming. Three AFC Division North titles, two AFC championships, and one Super Bowl with Bruce Arians calling the plays. In 2019, uh, the Steelers became the first team, uh, the first in team history to have a 4,000-yard passer, two 1,000-yard receivers, and one 1,000-yard rusher in the same season. Uh, the team broke franchise rankings for passing for first downs, 210, and passes completed, 351. So... Bruce is coming in there, grooming up a quarterback and move, make, making moves on offense. Very aggressive. Um, so the Steelers, after 2011, they have a little bit of a falling out. Don't bring him back. He's thinking about what he wants to do. Pag Chuck Pagano calls him up and says, hey, why don't you come over here, be the offensive coordinator over there? Well, 2012 is Andrew Luck's rookie season. Um, obviously, Pagano has gets sick and leaves the team with cancer and... Uh, Bruce Arians takes over and takes him uh, to a nine and three record in his 12 games, gets a playoff berth. Um, most records, most NFL wins with an interim coach, Arians and Pagano coach of the year. Um, Andrew Luck threw for the most passing yards, 4,374 by a rookie in NFL history. Um, Luck had an NFL rookie record, six 300 yard passing games led to the Colts. Seven game-winning drives in the fourth corners are OT, most by the rookie since this 1970 merger. So just, again, doing work with a quarterback. And then, of course, 2013, he gets his first crack at being the actual head coach and goes over to Arizona and revamp, you know, revamps Carson Palmer's career and brings him into just slaying year in, year out. And sure. 
you know, you were saying he was when we were talking about kind of the first guy to move guys around in the slot and be an innovator. And Carson Palmer was saying, you know, I've been playing football for 13 years and this guy comes in here and I'm just learning all sorts of things that I never even thought were this guy's so detail oriented and he's got such a good mind and the way he likes to do things is so awesome. Um, but what he likes to do is he likes to allow his quarterbacks to have a say in how and what they're doing. Um, and he likes to basically, before games start, they'll come in and be like, all right, well, here's the third down plays we we're thinking of running. Which ones do you feel comfortable running? Mm -hmm. uh, here's here's the first down packages we want to put in. You know, Which ones do you like? So him and his quarterback are tied at the hip, and he wants his quarterback to be comfortable with what he's doing. They Obviously, he wants him to run his system, but he wants him to run the, the plays that the quarterback is comfortable running. Uh, which I think is awesome. A lot of people will just come in there and it's my way or the highway and we're doing, I mean, see the Packers, this Mike McCarthy, this is what we're doing. And yeah. it doesn't matter. I don't care about this. I don't care. I don't care if I have Aaron Rodgers. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. Um, so I, I think that's, that's huge. Um, and you got Jameis in here. Who's had some bonehead plays on and off the field. Um, took a while for that off the field stuff to catch up to him, but it certainly did. But also a very sharp mind on the football field, as a lot of people will point out with Jameis Winston. So this this could be a really interesting marriage. And this is kind of the biggest reason why they brought him in was to help get Jameis to the next step. Um, well, he said he wasn't going to come out of retirement unless he had like the right QB situation. Right. He tried to get the Browns job and then he didn't get it. And then he took the, the James job and it was like, oh, so that's the guy you're. He likes, you're like the, you like that situation, huh? Likes what he saw in Jameis, and a lot of people will say how how bright he is, X's and O's wise on a board and, and reading a football field. Sometimes, you know, you see the, the bonehead plays that he makes in the interceptions, which, you know, we'll try to get over some of those, but whatever. The actual offense that he runs is a rooted in a vertical passing attack, um, but he's sending guys vertically kind of all over the field, but... What he likes to do is he likes to move, have one guy on the outside who's going to run vertical, and then the other guy on the outside is going to kind of run to the sticks. So he's got two options, and then he's going to run either his running back or another guy kind of shallow on a check down and another guy probably across the field. So he's giving you levels of different things to take. So it's not just like, oh, we're out here running wide open verticals, everything's down the field, all that kind of stuff. Like He's got different things set up, and Carson Palmer referred to several times about it's not about... It's about his scheme, but it's about how good he has a feel for the timing of when to take those big shots mm -hmm. and when to be like, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Now it's time. And it's all for Arians. It's all about um, keeping defenses on their toes. A lot of wrinkles and different schemes uh, likes to take you deep on multiple tight end looks and then he'll run an empty set and everyone will run short routes like yeah. just different things. To, and he'll run nothing but pass plays out of one one scheme for a week or two and then once you got the tape on it he'll come back in three weeks and he'll just run nothing but running plays out of that formation mm -hmm. so he's just kind of one of those those you know you had the sean paytons and you had the these these new innovators and bruce arians was an innovator of his own so he's coming back into the fold here with a team that's got a lot of different parts and pieces and some the high-end pieces are are good high-end pieces uh for the tampa bay buccaneers sure um, and he has been known to be a little bit of a risk taker. He's kind of, you know, that, that's a little bit of his, which could be a nail biter for, for Jameis Winston. They have, uh, let me find it here. Could be good and bad. Um, who do they got? They, when, when Ar Arians was in Arizona, um, they were the sixth highest, uh, interception rate team. So he's gonna, have turnovers in his offense like mm -hmm. it's it's they're going to risk it a little bit so he's going to live with Mike, of the biscuit part of the part of the issue here is they really like the biscuit why he doesn't mind maybe some Jameis Winston is hey I can live with a couple of turnovers here or there just maybe let's get rid of the really dumb ones where you're to tossing up grenades right. when yeah. you're about to take a sack <laughs> right Oops. um uh what's that the uh hook shot the sky hook, the, yeah. the sky hook. <laughs> In 2015, coached by Arians, they were the number one uh, air yards per attempt at 10.49. In 2018, the Bucks were number two, I believe, in air yards at 10.48. And then 2014, coached by Arians, the Cardinals, again, uh, near the top of the league, 10.38 per attempt in air yards. So a guy who wants to throw it around the yard a little bit, again, helping for the cause for Godwin and... and uh, Mike Evans here so 
just some interesting things of, of what this guy does and how he does it. I, I always find that to be a big part of the piece, the puzzle pieces of whether I'm not, whether I'm drafting a guy or not, what the coaching staff wants to do and how they want to do it and trying to get inside the philosophy of what they want to do. Now, it might not be for everyone. Some people aren't buying into that. They, they, they want, they want something completely different, but I, I think that's a huge, this is a, these are human beings doing things like they, Bruce Arians has a way he wants to do his things. And, I like to dig into it, and it seems like if he can get Jameis to just clean it up a little bit, he'll he's going to put him in positions to uh, be successful out on the field with Mike Evans and Goblin and and OJ Howard. Um, so I think I think the future is bright for these guys. Part of the part of the issue right now is they're maybe that offensive line not so great, um, but all of those a lot of those starters are coming back. They have a lot of starts under their belt. Could get a little bit better. They usually are a little bit higher in the league in sacks because they do have some plays where they will, you know, wait for that longer shot to develop here or there, but there will be a built in check down. Um, so Jameis is going to have to be ready to, to deal with that kind of stuff. So should be interesting. You got top bowls coming back. The one thing, you know, Steelers always have a good defense. The Cardinals with Todd Bowles had an innovative defense where they were using a lot of defensive backs Dime um, package. and doing a lot of different things. Well, he's got Todd Bowles back with him and they, they drafted like four defensive backs in this draft to go sure. along with Hargraves and other things. So setting up again for something they like to do. And he sees, he knows what he wants to do on offense. So he's kind of flipping it around on, Hey, we need, we need to be able to put right. athletic guys all over the field that can tackle and uh, we, we saw how fun that Arizona defense was with Bowles when they were like, what are they doing out there? Right. I was, yeah, I was pumped to see him and Bowles get back together. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. And for, he's got Byron Leftwich. Byron Leftwich is his quarterback coach, was his quarterback coach. Probably a good guy for Jameis Winston to be with and develop his game. This coaching staff that Arians puts together is is top notch and everyone was extremely excited saw, seeing that all come together. So a lot of things pointing up, which, you know, a lot of people were already excited about it, but I wanted to dig into it and see see what I could find so